Hi, you remember this, the 40 Max shell that powered my Nerf Claymore mine? What if we made a Nerf gun that used this? How powerful would it be? Now there's already a handful of hobby grade blasters that fire 40 Max shells like this one, but all of those fire the darts directly out of the shell, meaning there's no actual barrel. That's a lot of wasted gas and a lot of wasted potential energy. So that's why I designed this. It holds a single Nerf dart, but it's got this O-ring seal. That means we can get a proper air seal with a proper barrel. We're gonna get all that extra barrel length for the dart to accelerate along, and we'll see how much power can we squeeze out of this thing? Now let's build a gun that can fire this. All right, here's the gun. The design was inspired by various 50 BMG bolt action rifles. We're just 3D printing all the parts we need here. Red Loctite. This is the outer barrel. Detent going into the bolt handle. We're putting together the bolt assembly here. This basically houses the entire firing mechanism. This is the extractor. Trigger and bolt assembly going into the receiver. These threaded rods run along the length of the receiver and secure everything together. Some extra screws for the grip. Make sure everything's tight. The trigger mechanism is working well and the bolt is smooth. This is a TPU buffer pad to stop the bolt. Aluminum inner barrel going in. This is the outer barrel slipping over it. Bipod mount and muzzle. And now we just gotta screw in the barrel. And also screw this thing in. This is a special wrench to tighten the barrel to the receiver. And that's it, we're done. Gun complete. Okay folks, here it is. First prototype, working well. Well, everything is working except for this one issue. Uh oh, it's not extracting. It's fine, we just have to make this extractor piece a little bit thicker and stiffer. Simple fix. New extractor and, all right, feeds proper. Oh, okay, real quick. I changed the bipod mount from this one to this one. All right, we're gonna go test it now. That is straight Coleman propane oh. gas. It's so what? stinky. Anyway, oh. here's the darts are gonna be shooting. Chrono test, firing, 278. 221 that time. That is not even impressive. 219. Oh, 419. All right, now we're in the realm of what I like to see. Can we replicate it? 320. It's not very consistent, is it? 314. Okay, as we can see, this thing is just not very consistent. Now I've checked for a few issues. I checked for air leaks. I changed out the muzzle in case there's a muzzle obstruction. Here's the new one. I did get rid of the little lip. I even cleaned out the barrel. Whoa. Oh yeah, that's much cleaner. Now, none of those things actually improve the situation. And that's because the real culprit is this guy. Getting a consistent gas fill on this shell turns out to be pretty difficult. Look at how much gas is coming out of the muzzle here. Now look at how little gas is coming out here. It's not even visible. So yeah, basically, um, there's nothing I can fix here. And with that in mind, let's move on to penetration testing. This is just a standard cardboard box. We're gonna fire these. These are like hard tipped Nerf darts. They're not good to shoot people with because it hurts. But for this test, since we wanna see penetration, we should be using this. Here we go. That looked like uh, 326 feet per second. Look at that, punched through both sides. Here's the dart. Obliterated, one-time use, looks like. <laughs> That's cool. Let's see if we can clock a higher velocity. Okay, next one. Let's shoot a full-length Adventure Force start. This is a soft rubber tip, firing. Okay, for some reason it read 164, which is definitely not true. It's shooting a lot faster than that. Yeah, punch through both sides. That's crazy. Let's see how many this can penetrate. I'll make a second box and we'll see, whoa. We'll see if we can penetrate four layers. That'd be pretty cool. This is a ACC Gen 3 dart. Firing. 
461. That's fast. That is very fast. Hey, and we done it. That's just the foam left behind. Yeah, we penetrated. Four layers. That was pretty impressive. Now let's quantify how powerful these shots are. We can calculate the kinetic energy of the dart with the mass and velocity readings. So the ACC Gen 3 dart at one gram and 461 feet per second had 9.87 joules of kinetic energy. We actually had one faster velocity reading and that was with this, the Venom dart, but this one only weighs 0.95 grams. So even though it was going at 469 feet per second, the kinetic energy was only 9.71 joules, so slightly lower. Now for reference, a typical airsoft gun only has a kinetic energy of about 1.42 joules, so it's pretty low. And a paintball gun is around 10.93 joules. So we're actually super close to beating out a paintball gun. Now how can we make it more powerful? It's simple, we just have to give the darts more mass. So let's design a new dart. Here's the new AP dart. That's slang for armor piercing dart. You can tell it's got a pointed tip so we can punch through more layers of cardboard. I'm using a glue called E6000 here. It's known to cause cancer, but it works well for gluing dart heads onto foam. These new AP darts weigh 1.85 grams, so a whole lot heavier than the normal short darts. Now let's see what these guys can do. Let's give this a go. Three, two, one. Okay, interesting. Whoa, whoa, okay. It's just the foam that got left behind and then the dart head separated, hit through here. Looks like it punched through this side as well. And let's see. Oh, here it is. Punched through seven layers with this. That's pretty cool. Let's test that again. Firing in three, two, one. 383. Looks like the dart went in sideways here. Wow. The foam flew inside. Whoa. That's crazy. Anyway, foam left behind again. Here it is. That's crazy. So that was uh, seven layers. That's significantly faster though, 383. Close to breaking 400 on that one. All right, 383 feet per second at 1.85 grams. That's 12.61 joules. It's officially more powerful than a paintball gun. I'm still not happy that we didn't get through those eight layers though. Seven isn't enough. So let's make the dart a little bit heavier and see what happens then. Here's the new dart. They look mostly the same, but you can tell it's a little bit bigger. It's about 0.75 grams heavier than the previous one. Let's give it a test. Here we go. 348. I don't know why the, okay. Looks like it got blown back out, but it didn't go all the way through, but. Okay, pause, rewind. Look at that, it clearly went through. There's even a clean exit hole. So I don't know what I was thinking. That was clearly a success. Anyway, let me show you one more shot with the same dart that's even more impressive. Let's go again. Three, two, one. 356. Yes, we done it. That's 10 layers of cardboard penetrated. Okay, 10 layers. I'm happy with that. 356 feet per second at 2.6 grams. That's 15.31 joules. Not bad, but now let's really take it to the next level with the Super Slug. This is a blunt tip TPU dart with an embedded stainless steel ball bearing. It weighs a whopping 7.1 grams. Let's see what this monster can do. Here we go. In three, two, one. 260. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's see how many uh, how many joules that is. 260 feet per second, 7.1 grams. That is 22.29 joules. And guess what, guys? This thing is now considered a firearm in at least 17 countries. That's right. This is considered a restricted weapon, and it's available now on foamtechnician.com. We got pre-builds, hardware kits, Nerf stuff, and even some airsoft things. It's my own website. I run everything. I make everything. I do it all by myself, okay? Support me. Go check it out, foamtechnician.com. Let's go destroy some stuff.
Hopefully that looked cool guys. That concludes our destructive testing. We'll go back to the lab. Huh? That gun's pretty impressive, right? Now I'm gonna need you guys to subscribe because I got more projects in the pipeline, all right? I'll, pe I'll peace, I'll peace out. Let me peace out of here. See ya.